Hey guys, we are live at five. I'm Paul Wontorek. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. And it is November 20th, Thank Monday. Thank you for not making me ask. <laughs> yeah, and Matt Rodin's it's mom it. is watching. Hi, Mom. Hello. So we had to do this. Yeah. And we, we don't have that She's much in for news, a treat. We don't have a lot of news. But um, we have a great guest, Kathy of, Fitzgerald. Yes. Mrs. Gloop. <laughs> Uh, Charlie the Chocolate Factory, always hilarious. I mean, I've loved her in so many things, Amazing. so we're going to talk. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And also, let me can I just say that last night I got to see Mean Girls. Yes, yeah, That's yeah. big news. Absolutely. Yeah, I went to uh, Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. with Beth Stevens, and we went to the Washington opening of okay. Mean Girls at the National Theater. By the way, the cast was like so done up that I was kind of <laughs> like, you girls know you need to dress up again. I'm not, like, this is just yeah, Washington. Yeah, that's right. You've got this a lot like of, the out of town of partying to do. <laughs> Ashley Park was slid up to, I mean, it was, it was a, it was a thing. Anyway, you guys are going to love this show. I'm not going to reveal too much. Mm. I'm just going to say you're going to love it. I can't I mean, wait. it's going to be so a big excited. hit. People are going to love it. It's hilarious. Casey Nicola knows what he's Genius. doing. Tina yeah. Fey. I mean, and, and it was a great party and, um, just get ready because it's a lot of fun and, and we'll be talking a lot more about it as we get closer. Uh, starts, I think, on Broadway in March. March, March 19th, I believe. We got to get home for the holidays. It's yeah, the, currently yes, in, the, uh, in their theater, so th they're, keep, they're keeping <laughs> the right. August Wilson warm. <laughs> and then that'll and mean end. Girls, mean Girls is sticking in Washington, I think, through December 3rd, right? They're right. going to be there for a little while. Yeah, and then yeah. It's, so. it's a big hit uh, and, and beautifully cast. Like, just like a really, I remember when Those they were casting it. Yeah. We were trying to figure out who they were going to get for these roles, and they got amazing people. Oh, so, I can't wait. Anyway, we'll see a lot of them. They'll be on Live at Five. Of course. They'll be vloggers. They'll be on show people. They'll be everywhere. One-on-ones. Anyway, all sorts of. Uh, yeah. What's the news? What's the buzz, Ryan? Um, so first of all, School of Rock has welcomed Annalisa Leeming to the show. She is now playing Ro Principal Rosalie Mullins. She takes over for Lori Eve Marinacci, who is now playing Patty, and Jen Gambatis, who was in the show for such a long time. She completed her run on November 3rd. So welcome, Annalise Leeming. Enjoy being the principal cool. of Horace Green Prep. So Spamilton, everybody knows Spamilton, that's yes. a thing. Big that's hit. a thing because of Hamilton. Yes. Spam Gerard Allison Dream <laughs> made Spamilton. Yep. Uh, very it. clever uh, spoof. It's kind of like his old Forbidden Broadway shows that if you were around before yeah. 2006, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Um, anyway, it's closing. So Spamilton's oh. had a great run. Uh, it played uptown, and then it played. Now it's at the Puerto Rican Traveling Theater. I don't yep. know if it's still called that, but I call it yeah, that. Yeah, the Forty Seventh Street Theater. And it slash. played in Chicago when mm -hmm. it when Hamilton opened. It kind of follows Hamilton around, which is hilarious. It does, yeah, because it's, it's like, on the West Coast now. Yes, yeah, so now it's in it's in it's at the uh, the the Kirk Douglas Theater in L. A. Mm -hmm. And of course Hamilton's in L. A. And then it's going to go on the road because Hamilton's on the road. <laughs> so that's what you do. It's but it's closing on it. Broadway on January seventh. Broadway. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> That's it's an important <laughs> distinction. <laughs> Never played Broadway. Uh, off Broadway, January 7th, 2018. And of course, it was supposed to be a limited run, and it just became a big thing. And Joanne, our, our site producer, Joanne said she even saw the vinyl at Barnes & Noble. So... <laughs> That's so a big if deal. Yeah, if you get a vinyl at Barnes & Noble, that's yeah. part of the you know, musical yeah. theater Yeah, holiday gifting though. over there. Anyway. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder if they, when they make a Hamilton movie, if then they'll make a Spamilton movie. Like. <laughs> and the Spamilton yeah, concept album. Yes. I'm excited. Just yeah. keep going. Um, we asked you over the weekend to choose Broadway's Sexiest Man Alive for How'd 2017. How'd that go? I saw a lot of, uh, a lot of sexy those. men on my Instagram feed were campaigning. Yes, absolutely. Matt and I talked about it on Friday's Live at Five about who we were voting for. Who were you voting um, for? I, I, I put Jelani Remy as number one. Oh. He was my number one pick. I'm you know? partial to Isaac. I can't Isaac Powell. Oh. Also, well, I he's got Richard the moves. Blake. I love a Richard Blake. Yeah, absolutely. Richard Blake is... Well, the, you guys... Uh, you chose as your top three. Well, who won last year? Let's just remind people. Last year, Tyler Haynes won. The Rum Tum Tugger won last year. He did. He okay, did. so who, who are the top three this year? So the year? top three this year were Anastasia's Ramin Karamloo at number Very three. Very sexy. Derek Klenna at number two. Again, sexy. And sexy cast. Absolutely. And for the number second one? year in a row, Tyler Haynes of Cats. Congrats, Sexiest Rum Tum Broadway Tugger. Alive. Yeah, congratulations. That's yeah, that's amazing. It's amazing. People love that Tyler Haynes. They do. And he's wearing a lot of clothes in that show. <laughs> he is. They're tight, tight yes, clothes. Yes, yeah, you get, not much is left to the imagination. Um, <laughs> uh, so. Sweeney Todd, I have more off-Broadway news. Yes. Sweeney yes. Todd is off-Broadway. A huge hit. Huge hit off-Broadway. 
It was that again was also a limited run when yeah. it first started with the British uh, stars, mm -hmm. and now it's been extended through May 2018 mm -hmm. uh, down at the Barrow Street Theater. It's been amazing. You know, watch people love it because you sit there, you eat pie. You eat pie. You yeah. S sometimes you sit on a really uncomfortable <laughs> bench. If you're me, <laughs> I sh I'll bring a pillow next time. Did you get one of those chairs? I, I did. Yeah. It was, but you know, it, it was but still I was, worth it. I was the talent was amazing. I love seeing the show, the and the pie was actually good. The did pie, you have the pie was really good. I did. Yeah. The pie is the good, pie the is drama's good. good, the blood, all of that. Anyway, yep. Hugh Panero and Carly Carmelo, we adore both of them. They are in the show. They are there, I guess, through the end of February. Yes. But it's going to play through May 27th, and we don't know who's going in. No. New maybe, cast members Maybe Kathy Fitzgerald's going. I don't know. Like, There's all kinds of people that, could, that would be great. Uh, so anyway, it's a big, big fat hit down, down at Barrow Street. And now it's now the longest-running musical ever to play that theater. I wasn't going to read that out loud because that just seems like a BS kind of like, that seems like one of those things press agents say just to be like, and look, we made to up a fact. A little, yeah. We made up a fact to go with the news, but you said it, so yeah, well, you, know, you got it. It was said. Now it's been said. So <laughs> oh, my God. Um, also, some fun things on the site. Um, you can check out photos uh, of those Mean Girls cast members um, from their opening night there. Um, and yeah, it be, the previews on Broadway begin March 12th, 2019, not the 19th. I said that earlier. And also, we got the exclusive look at the poster for Fox's A Christmas Story Live, which is happening on Fox on December 17th. So you can check that out. I'm excited for that. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I only saw the Christmas Story musical, the Pat Sick and Paul musical, once. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I only yeah. saw it once. Sometimes it's I just so like to see good. something once, and I'm like, I saw it, but now I'm excited to see. Yeah. And they're like, they're like writing new things, right? They and do. They're, there's new material going yeah. in, and these I love Fox nailed, batted it out of the park with Grease Live, so yes. they they know what they're doing. They did. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Cool. All right. All right. We're gonna be right back. We're gonna take a quick break. We we'll right back with Kathy Fitzgerald of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. winner all across North America. This stirring and inspiring musical takes you to a place you never want to leave. Celebrate the best of humankind and the best in all of us at Come From Away, the remarkable true story of the small town that welcomed the world. You got to get up for Carol King, finding the top of the charts was easy. Finding her own voice was beautiful. Beautiful, the Carol King music. Hey guys, we are back on Live at Five with Kathy Fitzgerald. Hello. Hello. Currently making people laugh in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You know how to make people laugh. This yeah, boy. Yes. It's a thing you do. It's a thing I do. Yeah. Yes. Is it upsetting if they don't laugh? Very You're upsetting. Like, I make people laugh. What happened? Yeah. Oh, no, that's a bad day. <laughs> that doesn't work. Yeah, it's so fun. It's so fun. But not many bad days at Charlie the Chocolate Factory because no. that is a hilarious cast. It's so Very funny. funny show. Yes. We, we should we should say, though, it is closing. We're closing. January that's 14th. That's sad news. Yeah. So we still have like two months. Yeah, we have two full months. Yeah. 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 So there's still time to go see it. We'll nice Christmas the present. Yeah. Stuffing stalker. <laughs> what? <laughs> Stuffing stalker. Stuffing yeah. stalker. Uh, <laughs> and you are Mrs. Gloop. Yeah. It's so so fun. let's talk about her. Okay. She's a lot. Let's talk She's about the look, lot. first of all. The, the look's a lot. They call me the Christmas clown at work. <laughs> and I look like the Christmas clown. I mean, I have a braid, and my costume is bright red and deep forest green. And I have all sorts of various wiener snotchels, I like to call them. Um, big ones, small ones, they're really fun. We got them the first day of rehearsal. Like, there was just this, F me and F Michael, we went to this thing, and there was this whole Michael tray. Haney, yes. Michael Haney, And there was a whole tray of different sizes of wiener snotchels. And I was like, oh, this is so fun. 
fun. And we just got to pick them up and play. It was like, are you kidding me? This is like a dream. That's what you was, do. That's play what with I do. wieners. At the, I play with the wieners shop. eight shows a week, and it is a blast. <laughs> it's so fun. I know. I want to take them when we close. And it's a kids show. Yeah. Playing with wieners at the kids show. <laughs> uh, I have loved you in many things, Thanks. many years, and I was actually remembering. Swinging on a star. Oh God, I oh saw God. that. Oh was that, that was your Broadway debut. Oh, I'm so old. Yeah, I lovingly call it. Uh, we, we uh, Michael McGraw and I call it swinging on a turd ball. Even it was just a joke. <laughs> we didn't mean it. It was so much fun. But it was a, a flop. As much as we loved it, it ran five or six months at the Music Box. At the Music Box, everything flops there. Like Dervin Hans. Oh, <laughs> oh, that and, one. Uh, see, now it's a hit. <laughs> Isn't it funny how sometimes there's certain theaters that I think of as like flop theaters from like yes. I remember the Long Acre. I used to always be like, yes. nothing can run at the Long Acre, and now. Happy anniversary of Bronx Tale. I know. Well, it's good to cut that. They call yes. it. Yes. Yeah. And also, uh, the, um, the Marriott's supposed to be a big flop. Yeah, the Marquis. Yeah. But now um, they had. Uh, they've had hits. They've had, they've had hits, yeah. yeah. Nine to five. Yeah. It wasn't oh, right. Hit. So it you was just, that you went right she, in there. Let's just talk about the flops. You went right to Roz. <laughs> yeah, I know. Roz. Roz, who I love. She was so much fun. Oh, my fun. God. Roz in Nine to Five. I loved her. She, she was such a terror. She was so messed up. She had such a great number. I mean, that was like a, that was a nice juicy, a nice juicy part. number. It was a great juicy part. Yeah, I, I loved her because Joe Montello really helped me find the craziness of her. Like he'd come to me and say, "Kath, do you think maybe Roz has like too many cats?" And I go, oh, "Yes, that's so <laughs> good." Just those little nuggets. Little nuggets. Those are the things you need. Oh to my God, to make her just a little. She was not okay. <laughs> she was just a little messed up and very, like, she tried to keep it under, which made her even more, like, delicious. Uh-huh. Because she didn't always want to show how messed up she was. I just love that character. She was a mess. What happened to Roz at the end of 9 to 5? She ended up with Lisa Howard. We decided we were secret lovers. And I, we had a little a monologue that wrapped it up. And the closing night, Lisa and I decided to mouth kiss. And uh, <laughs> the stage manager didn't appreciate that. We thought it was hilarious. <laughs> it was closing night. <laughs> so we kissed the mouth. Um, so. Yeah, you, do you ever find that you, it's hel a healthy thing to sort of go over the top and to let yourself be free and do, have you ever, do you ever like push things a little? I mean, I know you, there are rules I to always Broadway. I push things, yeah. I think it's best if you, even with Jack in this rehearsal process for Jack Charlie, Brian. Jack O'Brien, we, um, I think the directors appreciate putting everything you have on the table and then they pick and choose and like with Joe Montello he'd say Kathy don't put a hat on a hat or a bow on a bow so I could pick a few things I couldn't pick all a hundred things because it's too much yeah it's way over the top so I like that and even though I felt like he was keeping me real uh, real in is that the right word yeah mm -hmm. uh, it worked for her because mm -hmm. she was so oppressed and I just let him out in little bits mm -hmm. and it was more delicious that way and same with um, Mrs. Gloop uh, F uh, well, and I wanted to do everything, and we couldn't, you know. And Jack just said, "Guys, it, it's way too much." I mean, we are kind yeah. of like cartoon characters anyway. Yeah. And I thought she wasn't real until I went to Ireland with my family, and I saw her on a tour. She was a mess. <laughs> she was like this five nine German <laughs> person, and she was kept smiling and asking questions. She's like, "Oh, I know!" And she laughed. She thought she was hilarious, and she was so obnoxious. <laughs> Everybody else on the tour wanted her to be quiet. She was horrifying. And I said, "See, I'm not too over the top. That's exactly wow. who she is. Wow. Just loud and yeah. laughing about everything." She thought she was so funny. <laughs> so she actually, Mrs. Gloop, she lives. She actually is a real person. Wow. Yeah. She's out there. Yeah. She might be watching. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the producers. Let's just, let's go through some of your. Yeah, uh, Shirley your Markowitz. That was a lot. Yeah, remind everyone of who that is. They they all know. Shirley Markowitz uh, was the hideous lesbian lighting designer. I got to do the gay scene with all these genius character actors, with Nathan Lane and Matthew Broderick and Gary Beach and mm -hmm. Roger Bart, and I was the only girl in the scene. And um, Sh Shirley was sad. <laughs> she was a very sad lesbian with very few words, but I fell in love with her. Yes. Because she would just do this most of the time. She didn't really talk, and she was very serious <laughs> and very flat. It was keep it gay, keep it gay, keep it gay. And then I got to do her again in the movie, and I'll never forget the day on the set. I looked so bad in that show. And I got onto the set for the film, and the, all the tech guys are kind of going, <laughs> no, I'm kind of cute under this horrible makeup. It was so horrifying because <laughs> I look bad. But she was such a blast. And that, that whole show was a blast to do. You know, was that about fun the, making that movie? It was. I mean, you know, it's, it's sort of like this interesting movie. It's gone down in history, and maybe it didn't do as well as people wanted mm -hmm. it to do. And yeah. some people said maybe it was too literal from yeah. the stage something, version. I probably shouldn't say this. Something about it didn't work. I'm not sure what. 
I, I don't know, because the play worked so well coming yeah. from the movie. Yeah. Um, but the experience I, of filming it, what was it? It was fun. It's the same guys. It was like, yeah. how do you not have fun with those guys? Yeah. Eight shows a week, it was fun with those guys. You know, I mean, Nathan would say, hey, why don't you try this? I go, oh, that's so great. And we laughed all the time. And uh, working with those actors. And then, and then, um, Brad Oscar came in yeah. after Nate. It was just a great group of funny, funny guys. And I was the only girl. Well, he, she. I was a he, she. But um, it, it was just the best. It was the best. Yeah. That show was everything. It was great. When, great. Uh, what was the first time when you were young that you made people laugh in a show? Did you do like high school theater? And My dad ran a theater in LA for years, so I sort of got to start. I always knew that I wanted to do it. And then after acting school, I thought I was a really serious actor. Okay. Was, you know, Brecht and Shakespeare, I thought I was really serious. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, <laughs> then I, I got a job, a little melodrama in Northern California, and uh, you had to be funny, or mm. else they, they serve food and beer and popcorn and hot dogs, and literally the audience would respond back to you. So if you weren't funny, they would literally throw popcorn and hot dogs at you. Oh my! Oh my! So I learned you real, and the real quick. Wieners. Yeah, me and the wieners. It's like the full circle. But um, <laughs> they would throw food, and I got to figure out that I was funny really fast because if you weren't, they didn't like it. And I'd never seen anything like it in my life. I mean, it was like hands-on, gritty, sawdust on the floor. You have to make them laugh. And so I think that's out of panic for my life. I started figuring out how to be funny. Yeah. And did you do musical comedy there? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. what? What'd you do? Mrs. Lovett. Oh, and see? Um, see? Oh, see? Oh, wait, they're still running. <laughs> 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 um, a lot of things. It was melodrama, so a lot of them were very period pieces. Yeah, okay. you know. Uh, but it was a great place to work and got, you know, break my comedy chops, so to speak. You have so many questions. Emily has a silly question, but I'll read it. Kathy, okay. what's it like being so fabulous? Stop, Emily. <laughs> my number is 212. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, Cassie, K-A-S-S-Y, not the course line spelling. Uh, best advice for someone getting into the industry? Oh, boy, that's a question. Um, yeah, it's a heavy question. It's a heavy question. I say if you're coming from high school, go get some really good training. There's lots of great theater schools, and I would get into one as soon as possible. And then, of course, if you want to do musical theater, I'd say after you get a good chunk of training, come to New York City if you want to do musical theater. It is the um, capital of musical theater. We're, we, we kind of know what we're doing here. Um, so I'd say do that. But get training first, absolutely. What about Nathan Lane as your Sweeney? I think that's perfect. I don't know if Nathan would do it because he likes to originate. <laughs> He'd be I perfect. Don't know. Love you, Nathan. I think he's busy. I think he's busy. <laughs> I think he's, busy. he's a little he's busy, busy right now. America. Oh, that's I right. Know. I'm I'm dream ca <laughs> dream casting doesn't have to be literal. Um, uh, John Brandon, one name, wants to know what's your favorite part in the show in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Is there something every night you're just like, oh. Can't wait to go to that moment. Yeah, I really love it when my little chubby. Love it. I'm really love you're it. pushing it hard. I really am, right, honey? <laughs> what? What? Um, I love it when um, my little chub chub, F. Haney, goes up the chocolate tube and then the little Oompa Loompas come out and they literally attack me. And every night, spoiler, I don't know. It is a uh, spoiler, sorry. But it is so fun because I got these little, they have little Doc Martens on and little hands and they literally, there's three of them and they grab me and I get to <laughs> scream and they, 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 it is so much fun because you feel like you're like there. Yeah. You know, because they're really hands on, like attacking you. It is so fun. Yeah. And I try to feed them my wieners back to wieners. I try so hard, like, I think maybe they're hungry. I'll give them a snack. That doesn't work. It's just a blast. It's, that moment's a blast. Are you really screaming when they carry you off? Screaming. Or are you fake screaming? Oh, it's I'm like pre recorded. So screaming. No, I'm Don't screaming. Don't you have to protect your voice? Oh, please. I'm, I, I peace out 15 minutes in act two. I can scream all I want. It's fantastic. <laughs> uh, Emily, again, Kathy, I know you played so many beautiful and hilarious roles. What are some of your dream roles? I'd love to play Mrs. Lovett, and I'd also <laughs> like to... <laughs> um, I've never played Hannigan. I got cast a long time ago. Ah. It was so weird. I got cast a long time ago somewhere, and then I got the tour of Wicked, and I had to turn it down. So I'd love to do Hannigan. Hmm. I'd love to do Lovett. I did Mama Rose once. I'd love to do it again. Wow, when where'd you, you do that? Um, Arizona. Hmm. Um, you kind of scratch the surface with her because she's so intense. Yeah. So I think doing that part more than once is actually good. Cause you can't even... On a 12 week run, you can't get even to the bottom of that crazy person. She's yeah. nuts. But the music's so delicious to sing. Yeah. And it's right in my range because I have a man voice. And, um, <laughs> hello. And, uh, we love a man voice. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Um, <laughs> so I think those roles. And then I'd like to do some plays. I'd like to do some plays. Mm -hmm. I'd like to switch it up, mm -hmm. do a comedy. Do you have favorite comedy writers? 
I don't. I love Tina Fey. I'm such a big fan. Mm. She's so fantastic. Yeah. Everything she does is great. Yeah. Fantastic. I can't wait to see Mean Girls. Mean Girls. Come to Broadway. Mean Girls. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, just Jacob has a good question. Which role that you did in the past would you do again if you could? Oh, definitely Roz in 9 to 5 because uh, I was so short. I mean, we yeah. were flop. And even though it was so much fun to do in that company, we loved each other. Yeah. And Allison was so great. And the girls were so great. I mean, we were just like, it was a love fest the whole time. Yeah. All we did was laugh. Kind of like the show I'm in now. And um, and when you only get to do a show for six months, you really like to go back and revisit it. And I think um, that would be one I'd love to do. She's so fun. Yeah. I yeah. want a movie musical of 9 to 5. Matt Rota wants a great. movie musical of 9 to 5. That'd be great. Five. Bob Greenblatt, you run NBC now. He was at the Mean Girls opening last night. I, I, I would have, yeah. you know what, you, what you told me last week, I would have, I would have <laughs> mentioned it to be a live, a live NBC broadcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh-huh. Um, uh, oh, Penny was just at the show this past Saturday. Uh, you know. Hi, Penny. Um, <laughs> uh, they miss you and love you in Phoenix, Frank says. Oh, hi, guys. Uh, keep being brilliant. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just reading all. George said you're the, the best part of the producer's film, his favorite part. Uh, thanks. Uh, Renee will be there Saturday night if you can give a shout out to her. Renee, maybe. I will wave to you and I'll go <laughs> like this with my Vienna Schnorchels. That will be for you, Renee. And you know what? Just for you, Renee, we're going to add a scene where <laughs> three Oompa Loompas come out and then they and attack, gra- me. attack you. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to add that just for you. Uh, Emily wants to know what's your best onstage kiss? Oh, Lordy. Um, the only one I ever got to do was when I did a nightclub confidential with Scott Bakula in Los Angeles, and I got to kiss. You got him. to kiss Scott Bakula. Eight shows a week. What year? Like around? It was, was like this? 1932. I'm kidding. It was like 19. It was like in the 80s. It was Scott Bakula. Yeah. That that's fantastic. a good that's a good period. Yeah, I replaced his that's wife a good at the period time. Period of time. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is a good question. How is it acting with the three different Charlies? So interesting. That's a great question. Um, Completely different. All three boys are completely different. Um, Jake, Ryan, and I are best friends. It just happened. Nothing against the other two boys. I love them all. They're all fantastic. <laughs> but it's a different show with each boy, most definitely. They each have their different take on it. Yeah. They, their sound of their voice is different. The way they are physically is different. Um, they're all sweet, 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 great boys. And so when you get on stage, do you kind of not know until you're on stage? No, no. Can you <laughs> like, imagine? Well, hello. Wonder, it's like, who's on tonight? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello there, Charlie number three. <laughs> no, they announce it, which is good because uh, the show's just a little bit different with each one. So uh-huh. it's actually really yeah. good to know. They announce it every night, like who's replacing right. who and who's on for who. So, uh, yeah. Joe wants to know, the one credit we have not, sp- I mean, there's more than one, but the one big one we haven't spoken about is a role you've played many times, Madame Morrible oh, yeah. in Wicked. Yes. And Joe wants to know, any good Wicked stories? It's a very big question. Oh, so many. <laughs> so many Wicked stories. Uh, I do Wicked a lot. I did it on Broadway for like a year and a half, and then I went on tour, and then Kara and I, Kara Massey, Kara Lindsay, Kara, what's your last name? <laughs> anyway, um, we went back to Her Broadway together. Her name is Lindsay. Man, it changes so much. <laughs> anyway, um, I have so many stories. When I first got into the show, uh, they only give you 10 days, and it's a lot of lines, and it's a strange Aussie in words. And I, right before many years I have waited, right before The Wizard and I, you're supposed to sing this little bitty in it, this little tiny bit, and then it brings in alphabet. And I was just too soon, and I literally didn't know what I was going to say. And I went, many years there were some things <laughs> in this land, and I hear all like 25 ensemble people behind me literally dying and falling out and dropping on the ground. I was, I was a wreck. And the thing about Wicked is such a hit that everyone knows the words. You can't mess up. You cannot mess up, and boy, did I mess up. I messed up bad. Yeah? Oh, it was so bad. <laughs> it was a bad day. I feel like you get away with it because people love it when you mess up. And, oh, and your yeah. your uh, co-stars and your yeah. team must kind of There was a couple it. times even with Kara, like we'd be in that balcony and you know, I, when I grab her, I said, no, you listen to me, Missy, right? Because when you know <laughs> someone so well, Katie Rose Clark too and Kara, they're such good friends of mine that a couple of times, I shouldn't say this, but anyway, I'm going to anyway. No, um, I would grab them and I said, no, you listen to me, Missy. And both of them at one to- time or another both went like this. <laughs> and it's like, dude, this is the end of Act Two. We can't be laughing and breaking right here. This is not actually a good idea because I will dump you over the back. I mean, you know that scene at the very yeah. end. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, but you, when you know someone that well, you almost oh, they're gonna be so mad at me that I said this. I'm, I'm sorry. But um, you know, when you know somebody that well, things like that happen all the time. When you just like like fake grabbed me, I felt the intensity. Were you I would never. Yeah. <laughs> I think they'd be laughing because they're scared. Uh, <laughs> 
Oh, <laughs> Quinn, what's the funniest thing someone in the cast of Charlie has done on stage? Oh, there's so much. <laughs> oh my God, I don't even know where to start. Jackie's hilarious Hoffman. nightly. Christian Borel, who's <laughs> nightly hilarious. And the thing about him is he changes it every day. So we're constantly surprised. Like, was it last night? Yeah, last night he decided to just be blind and to not look any of us in the eye for a good, mm, I don't know, seven minutes. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. He literally was, he picks me up at the top of um, Pure Mansion. He said, come with me and you'll be, he literally was looking at me like this. <laughs> with glass eyes, I thought, I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him when I get off the stage. But you can't laugh, it's this beautiful moment. He is delicious to work with. It's always new. There's something always different happening. It's never the same in that yeah. show. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like this crazy, wacky cartoon that you're living in that yeah. you never quite know what's going to happen. And it's especially because of him, because he always changes it up. And I think that's delicious. Can it's you think so of a, another uh, classic musical you'd like to do with Christian Borrell? Oh, my God. Anything. <laughs> what could I do with him? <laughs> Quick think, Cap. Here's a few. Here's a few options based on what you already said. He could be your rooster. <laughs> That's an option. Would he do that part though? He's so fancy now. Well, uh, we're dream casting. We're dream casting. <laughs> Christian, please, please. Well, he could be your Herbie <laughs> in Gypsy. Would he do that? That'd be interesting. But he's so much That's younger different. than me. That's different. We'll talk to him. Oh, he could be God. your Sweeney. He'd That'd be, be interesting. Yeah, that he would that. do. That okay. he would do. Christian Sweeney Todd. <laughs> We figured it out. We Woo! figured it out. Uh, uh, can we hear a little yodel from Mrs. Gloop? Denise wants to know. Is that okay? Is that Do you have cash, Denise? No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah, I actually had to study this a little bit. It wasn't, didn't come that easy. I kept losing my voice because you have to, um, ole, ole, ole. See, you have to go head, chest, head, chest. Yodeling's tricky. I don't want to I don't want to ruin tonight's show. Oh, it's, it's fine. But I finally figured it out. But you, it's definitely, you go head, chest. Ole, ole. I can't believe I'm yodeling. Anyway, come see the show. It's a skill you might not ever need. I, I bet I trial. won't. <laughs> I bet I will. I mean, how many times do you yodel in life? You can add some yodeling to Mama Rose, I'll bet. But you could I work that could. in. There's a moment in the show where I say, let's yodel. Like everyone in the audience really wants to do it. And some, <laughs> some nights I'm like, come on, let's yodel. And I'm just clapping and F and I are trying to get them wet. There's literally been a couple nights that there's a couple older women in the front row just like this. I am not going to yodel. I'm not <laughs> even going to try to get so angry about it. Yodeling's fun. Yeah. You cannot not laugh. It's like tap dancing. Yeah. You can only smile. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Do you, uh, Brett wants to know, are there any plans after Charlie? I mean, you just found out it was closing, so you were planning on yeah. doing Charlie. Yeah, I think um, my daughter is in college for uh, at UC Irvine, and mm -hmm. so uh, we just bought a house out there. Oh, so I, know I love it out there. That's great. So uh, January 18th, I'm going to pack it up, and I'm not leaving New York. I'm just going to go back and forth a lot. Yeah. And uh, go out there for a little while to be with my husband and my daughter and to audition out there for a bit. Chill out. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That's yeah, a nice be fun. plan. Yeah. I'm going to stop by if I'm in the hey, area. Honey, I've got three bedrooms. You're more than welcome. Oh, fabulous. Yeah, well. It was on camera, so it's officially <laughs> an invitation. <Yeah. laughs> Very obnoxious. <laughs> and, uh, anyway. uh, thank you so of much for coming by. Of course, it was so much by. fun. Of course, uh, honey. Kathy is in Charlie the Chocolate Factory through January 14th, One Fontaine Theater. It's hilarious. You have to see that cast and those songs and the so choreography fun. and the Oompa Loompas and all of it. Yeah, it's all good. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you so much, honey. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you.